I met him at a golf course and then we saw him once in Las Vegas and that was a really fun interaction where Ben stood next to him and stood as tall as he could and he looked at Jordan who wasn't that much taller than him and Ben said, you're not 6'6", six, because six, he's famously listed at 6'6". Six, six. And Jordan goes, yes, I am. And ben goes, yeah. He goes, maybe 6'4 and a half. And Jordan, without missing a beat, immediately goes, which made what I did all the more incredible. <laughs> he had a point. He had a point, yeah. Ben and I got a job one summer um, working at a movie theater. And um, it was hard for a different reason, which was that the um, We'd come really close on this movie called Dead Poet Society. Yeah. And we went from not getting the parts to working in the movie theater that showed the movie. And oh, so gosh. we had to tear tickets, <laughs> you know, um, Did uh, you have a sad get popcorn. Affleck and, then? Uh, what's that? Did you have sad Affleck then? Uh, that, was, I, that was the saddest <laughs> Affleck there's ever been and the saddest Damon too. We just sat there all summer long and watched people weeping as they came oh, out no. of this wonderful movie. <laughs> <laughs> and we just went like, that could have been us. Yeah. We need to talk about something. Yeah, very important topic. Your friend, Ben okay. Affleck. And, and a little thing we call Benifer. Minute. Absolutely. You know, it's bad enough. So Absolutely. It's hard enough. How do you like them apples? <laughs> There's not enough liquor in the world for you to get me to say something. Hey, he's just a guy doing what he do, and I wish he do keep doing well and keep on dancing. Even in jail, Knight made headlines when it was reported that he planned to distribute a homemade video featuring Jennifer Lopez. Make a Jennifer Lopez video somewhere. Everybody says you've got it and you want to sell it on the At that time was uh, cared very deeply uh, for. Do you guys have an unspoken language? Yeah. 40 something years of hanging out together. That's a beautiful guy. I love him. He's my best friend. He's been great to me my whole life. Is Ben really your best friend? Yeah, I mean, we grew up together. We both were in love with the same thing, with, with acting and filmmaking. I mouthed off to a kid that I knew. He came for me. And it was right then that little five foot two Ben Affleck tackled this dude off of me, what? like out of nowhere. Like he will, he will put himself in a really bad spot for me. Like this yeah. is a good friend. Like, why you dunking me, girl? Why you dunking? How do you like them? Donuts, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Remember when I told you I'd do anything for you? This is anything. I actually said that to him when we were filming. <laughs> Here's 17 year old uh, Matt and Ben in a photo booth. Look at this. Yeah. <laughs> Hard not to see that those yeah. guys are gonna make it. Yeah. Told me 25 years ago, we said, "Be like, we made it. We're still working." Okay, good. Hey, Jennifer. It's Jennifer Garner to the rescue as she descended on Ben Affleck's home and staged an intervention after her ex apparently fell off the wagon. Can you guys please do me a favor? Yes, yes. Just out of respect. Yes. Can you give some space? Hello, and Ben Affleck. Oh, that's there. Well, she's sniffing. I think she does taste his drink, but really? she grabs it. People are assuming to think that it's to ensure it didn't have alcohol in it. Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez at the shotgun wedding party. <laughs> Being the child of uh, famous parents is really not something that many people can understand and, I, and I, I feel for them for that because they didn't choose that. Well, there was a solid decade where there were five or six cars minimum and up easily up to 15 or 20 on the weekends outside of my house at all times. And looking back on that, I really feel the stress of it. I really, it may, I could cry talking. <laughs> I, I was, I mean, I'm 48 and I find, I called my parents and said, Dad, I'm going to pierce my ears. And he said, okay, Jennifer. <laughs> um, but let's see. The, we, we didn't, we didn't wear makeup. We didn't have our nails painted. We were very good girls. And now it's not all like hearts and flowers anymore. Now it's kind of like, you know, wh why are you telling me to do that? I don't want to do that. You know, just like constantly kind of the push and pull of being a teenage mom. Is that Max or Remy? Who's the most challenging? Uh, both of them. Yeah. Both of them are. Oh, oh my gosh. Find Fact. scientific evidence that um, matches what I have that says that it's not good for teenagers, then we'll check. When you say you don't drink, you don't drink at all? You just drink? No, I'm not, a, I'm not a drinker. I just never started. It was another one of those things my mom just never, you this, know, was this like, is what don't I drink. <laughs> don't do drugs, you're gonna die. I'm like, okay. <laughs> You know, I was like in my head. I just said to my kids, tell me, show me the articles that that prove that social media is good for teenagers, and then we'll have the conversation. Oh, oh my gosh. Find Fact. scientific evidence that um, matches what I have that says that it's not good for teenagers, then we'll chat. And how do they feel at this point? Uh, my eldest is grateful. 
Wow. See, and you we'll just gotta see. be in the long haul. Though. I mean, it's a long haul. I have a couple more to go, so just knock on wood. We'll see if I really hang in there. Well, my mom was narcissist, center of attention, you know, life of the party type person. I got very used to being around people like that. The combination of the two of those things set me on a course to be with those type of people. What I started to realize was I'm comfortable with this, but I don't like this. Selfish. This is not what I want. This is just looks like a dead chicken. And she doesn't even try to hide her annoyance. Fans fell in love with JLo for being Jenny from the block. But according to her employees, it's all a mask. And underneath it is a pretentious woman who treats service people like dirt. I want something real. And it's easy for her to offend her colleagues and even those closest to her. But is she really that bad? My kids were at that age where they were like challenging the status quo and really, you know, kind of looking at you. Yeah, he's like, I promise it doesn't yeah. have alcohol in it. You can in the morning, you can either be making breakfast for your kids, making their lunch boxes, or you can be getting paparazzi ready. <laughs> and so, you know, I know which way I'm gonna go. When I was reunited with the love of my life, and we decided we were gonna be together forever. One thing you can always trust in, oh God, family. We do our best, we do try our best. You don't need to worry about Ben, let me just tell you. That they were seen in public together in, gosh, uh, more than a month. Yeah, 47 days. 47 days. The flowers were not for Ben, yeah. but they both showed up with flowers. They went to go see one of Ben's kids was starring in a play last night, a school play, and Jen was there as right. well with Emmy. And they all went in together as a family and they went and saw the play and then afterward, Ben drove Jen and Emmy home to Beverly Hills. <laughs> okay, we're not doing that. <laughs> thank you so much, guys. Really appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. You know better than that. Come on, don't come in here with that energy, please. doesn't, I feel like, actually get mentioned enough, if I could just end on one yes. thing, is that Jen is a producer on this movie, yes. and the reason why I'm here and the reason why Sterling was in this beautiful movie is because Jen cares, and Jen cares about things like representation and diversity, and she's a boss, and she's an incredible creative and an icon, and that's what I think we should celebrate her for today. We got back together, it was just like... I want to make music again. I want to get back in the studio. I was very, very inspired. And when I think about, I was like, the same way This Is Me then captured that moment in time without me realizing it. Mm. The first time we kind of fell in love, I wanted to capture this moment in time. And now it's J-Lo and Ben in You've Got Mail. Subject line, yo girl, remember me? So Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez didn't just suddenly start hanging out together two weeks ago and started reaching out to her in February, sending her emails. I've always, for better or for worse, have followed my heart <laughs> and, my, and my instincts, and this is where it brought me to. Why are people always worried about what face Ben has on? Like, if he did, if Ben, know. like, walks out the house ben and he's on. all right. On the street is the Bronx doesn't even fuck with this one. You can't come back to your hood, huh? <laughs> what Dirk say? <laughs> What's something else that real New Yorkers say? F*** you! The diva, I'm rich and you're broke attitude. Let's be real here, homegirl. Work hard. That I put in harder work than everybody else. I work harder and harder and harder and harder. And when everybody's sleeping, I'm doing more. Like this. It reminds me like when I was 16 in the Bronx, running up and down the... Okay. <clears throat> I truly have left this woman alone for years. I have just been annoyed in silence since high school. And guess what? I'm a Puerto Rican woman from the Bronx who went to the same high school as you, and you're lying. I saw your high school photo. You did not have hair like that. And we also both attended an all-girls Catholic high school in an Irish and Italian neighborhood. So you weren't running up and down the block. You know damn well you were sitting next to Megan Farley and Christine Marchetti in class. Why are you lying? Please stop using us to look human. We are sick of you. You don't do shit for us. Keep our names out of your mouth. We're not running up and down the block. Not all of us do that for kicks. You're stupid. Stop using us to look human. 
stop using us to look relatable. We don't like you. A flying fuck about celebrity culture, especially when you see just how hard she's trying to be relatable. Like, how many times is this girl gonna mention the block? But then, whenever she goes and visits said block, nobody recognizes her or claims her as one of their own. Said, what can I get you to drink? But Jennifer refused to even acknowledge me. She turned her head away and told her personal assistant, "Please tell him I'd like a diet coke and lime." She wouldn't even look at me. It was sad. She seemed so sweet in her movies. The only reason why you were famous is because of the role you played as Selena, which came out very shortly after she passed away, which of course made your career skyrocket. And for some reason, her playing the role of an actually talented singer must have gotten to her head, and she then believed that she could also sing. When in reality, she's not that good. You guys ever see that clip of her SNL performance before they dubbed it with auto tune? The shit sounded like a dying feral cat. So I don't know. I have a problem when someone copies my look exactly. Exactly, and they're not even a real singer. Sorry. Okay. Are you guys good? Yeah. Get a monogram being like a diva, which I never felt I deserved, which I don't deserve. The A-list everything in her mind celebrity was shopping in NYC and told a salesperson to stop looking at her and to turn the other way. And this is allegedly J-Lo. Apparently she has this role that if she's like out amongst us peasants, we're not allowed to look her in the eye. One thing you can always trust in, oh God, family. We do our best, we do try our best. You don't need to worry about Ben, let me just tell you. That they were seen in public together in, gosh, uh, more than a month. Yeah, yeah 47 40, days. 47 days. The flowers were not for Ben, yeah. but they both showed up with flowers. They went to go see one of Ben's kids was starring in a play last night, a school play, and Jen was there as right. well with Emmy. And they all went in together as a family and they went and saw the play. And then afterward, Ben drove Jen and Emmy home to Beverly Hills. Mm. Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck are reportedly selling their home amid breakup rumors. According to multiple outlets, the couple's Beverly Hills home, which they bought together back in May of 2023 for $60.8 million, has been quietly placed on the market. Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck are clearly in a rough patch in their marriage of, what, less than two years at this yeah. point, because we know they are living in separate households right now. Well, that was quick. Apparently, Ben and Jen are already on the outs again after less than two years of marriage. Love in some ways, yeah. but then they realized there was difficulty and maybe, you know, they've grown apart. They're two completely different people. And this is like their one public outing in weeks because he didn't even come support her at the Met Gala when she was a co-chair. So like, obviously this was planned and it's just... In a surprising twist in the ongoing divorce saga between Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck, Lopez has expressed her desire to revert to revert to her maiden name, signaling a possible closure on this chapter of her life. According to divorce documents obtained by TMZ, Lopez officially requested to change her legal name back to Jennifer Lynn Lopez. This move comes after she had adopted the Affleck surname following their marriage in July 2022. However, with the marriage now facing its official end, Lopez appears ready to leave the Affleck name behind. When Jennifer filed the divorce papers earlier this week, she did so under her married name, Jennifer Lynn Affleck. Now, she's specifically asking the court to restore her maiden name, which has been central to her successful career. This request suggests that she's ready to move on from her marriage with Ben. TMZ first reported that Jennifer personally filed for divorce at the Los Angeles County Superior Court without the assistance of an attorney, marking what would have been their second wedding anniversary. The decision to file the documents independently suggests a determination to take control of the situation. Notably absent from Jennifer's filing is any mention of a prenuptial agreement. Sources close to the couple have revealed that no prenup exists between them, a surprising revelation given their high-profile status and substantial individual assets. As reported previously, Jennifer and Ben have been engaged in ongoing negotiations to settle their divorce. However, these discussions have reportedly become increasingly contentious, with tensions running high. There have even been instances where the couple was not on speaking terms, highlighting the deteriorating state of their relationship. Jennifer's desire to shed the Affleck name could be seen as a reflection of the bitterness that has developed between the two during the divorce proceedings. It's clear that Lopez is looking to fully reclaim her identity as she moves forward from this chapter in her life. The couple's relationship had been under public scrutiny, especially after spending much of the summer of 2024 apart. 
Lopez was often in New York, while Affleck stayed in Los Angeles, which fueled rumors about their separation even before it was confirmed. This physical distance seemed to reflect the emotional gap that had grown between them. In the past, Lopez spoke fondly of taking Affleck's name, describing it as a romantic and traditional gesture. However, as their relationship soured, the symbolic act of reclaiming her original name suggests a desire to fully move on from the marriage. This name change could also signal a return to the identity that Lopez had before their rekindled romance. The lack of a prenuptial agreement between the two has also raised eyebrows, considering both their substantial fortunes and previous marriages. This detail adds another layer of complexity to the ongoing divorce proceedings, which have reportedly become increasingly acrimonious. Matt Damon, a lifelong friend of Ben Affleck, has never been one to hold back his thoughts, especially concerning his friends' relationships his latest revelations about the role Jennifer Garner played in Saving. Ben from Jennifer Lopez are bound to make you question everything you thought you knew about Hollywood's most talked about love triangle. Did Jennifer Lopez really use shocking evidence to manipulate Ben Affleck, keeping him under her control? And what's the truth behind the mysterious FBI tapes from the raid on Diddy's properties that have sparked so much speculation? Let's start with the most jaw-dropping claim the FBI tapes that Ben Affleck allegedly possesses containing incriminating footage of Jennifer Lopez. This rumor has reignited discussions about potential cracks in Ben and Jennifer's marriage, and it all seems to center around Diddy, the disgraced Bad Boy Records executive. On a recent episode of his podcast Collect Calls with Suj Knight, the former Death Row Records CEO made explosive claims hinting at a strange connection involving the FBI, Jennifer Lopez, and Ben Affleck. Knight alleges that the FBI handed over tapes to Affleck that were seized during raids on Diddy's homes in Miami and Los Angeles. These tapes, according to Knight, could be at the heart of the alleged rift in Affleck's marriage to Lopez. They raided Puffy's house and found all these videos of J.L.O. involved in things she shouldn't have been Knight revealed, referencing the infamous 1999 nightclub shooting involving Lopez and Diddy. This incident is often cited as a turning point in Lopez's public image. Knight went on to accuse Lopez of lying about the shooting, claiming she falsely pinned the blame on rapper Shine, which led to his imprisonment. According to Knight, Lopez knew that the gun belonged to Diddy but chose to protect him, leading to Shine's downfall. Knight further speculated that the FBI decided to inform Affleck about the tapes because of their potentially damaging content. If the tapes were to become public, the impact on Lopez's reputation could be devastating much like the fallout from Diddy's 2006 scandal involving his ex-girlfriend Cassie. Knight suggested that the FBI likely gave Affleck a courtesy call given his high status in Hollywood to show him what they had uncovered. I'm sure they showed him things about his wife's past, with Puff Knight said. After seeing those tapes, I doubt Ben could ever look at her the same way. To understand the significance of these tapes, we need to look back at the history between Jennifer Lopez and Diddy. The two met in 1999 on the set of Lopez's music video for If You Had My Love and began dating soon after. Their relationship was marked by turmoil, including the infamous 1999 Times Square nightclub shooting that left three people injured. While Lopez was released after 14 hours in custody without charges, Diddy faced a seven-week trial. His protege Shine was convicted and sentenced to 10 years in prison, widely believed to have taken the fall for Diddy. Lopez later described the entire ordeal as a complete nightmare and the emotional and legal fallout was severe. In 2008, one of the shooting victims filed a $130 million lawsuit against Diddy, which was eventually settled in 2011. These events only added layers to the complex narrative surrounding Lopez, Diddy, and now Ben Affleck. The confidential terms of the settlement between Diddy and his shooting victims remain under wraps, but recent developments have reignited interest in his legal troubles. Earlier this year, Homeland Security agents raided Diddy's homes in Los Angeles and Miami, reportedly prompted by serious allegations. Amid this growing legal storm, concerns about Jennifer Lopez's involvement in Ben Affleck's life have resurfaced, particularly among Affleck's close friends like Matt Damon. In a recent interview, Matt Damon expressed deep concern for his best friend, hinting that Jennifer Lopez's influence on Ben might be more manipulative than anyone had previously imagined. Matt tried to warn Ben when he got back together with J.L.O. that this could happen, as an insider told the Daily Mail. Matt was there to help Ben pull himself together after their first breakup, and he feared history might repeat itself. The source further explained that Ben has always admired Matt's long-standing marriage to Luciana Barroso, which has lasted over eight years. 
As Ben's relationship with Jennifer Lopez began to show signs of strain, Matt encouraged him to refocus on his work and personal well-being. Ben spends so much time focusing on J.Lo's projects, just like he did the first time around the insider noted. Matt questioned what Jennifer had ever done to support Ben's career. According to the source, Matt is one of the few real friends Ben has left. He's been instrumental in keeping Ben away from alcohol and has consistently supported him during tough times. Matt's concerns have only intensified as rumors about Ben and Jennifer's relationship troubles continue to swirl. On May 15, an exclusive source revealed to InTouch that Ben and Jennifer were headed for divorce after Ben moved his belongings out of their shared home. The writing is on the wall, the source said. It's over. They're headed for a divorce, and for once, Ben isn't the one to blame the insider shared that Ben is now focusing on his work and his children. Ben has already moved out, and they'll likely have to sell the dream house they spent two years searching for, despite their love for each other. The source added, she can't control him and he can't change her. There's no way it could have lasted. They waited almost two decades to get back together, but in the end, they couldn't overcome the same issues that tore them apart the first time. Matt's comments have sparked widespread speculation about what he meant by a healthy relationship. Was he implying that Jennifer Lopez isn't the supportive partner she appears to be? To fully grasp the situation, we need to revisit the beginning of the Benefer saga in the early 2000s. Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez were Hollywood's a couple, with every move they made documented by the press. However, while everything seemed perfect on the surface, those close to Ben were concerned about his well-being. Ben and J.Lo called it quits in 2003, only to reunite two decades later. The relentless media scrutiny was a significant factor in their initial breakup, something Ben acknowledged at the time. However, when they reconnected, Ben claimed he had learned to navigate the pressures of fame better. He even shared his thoughts in Jennifer's 2024 documentary, The Greatest Love Story Never Told, where he emphasized the importance of keeping their relationship away from the public eye. Getting back together, I said, listen, one of the things I don't want is a relationship on social media, Ben confessed. And then I realized that's not a very fair thing to ask. Ben Affleck once admitted, it's like you're going to marry a boat captain and you go, well, I don't like the water he was referring to the challenges of marrying someone like Jennifer Lopez whose life is constantly under the public eye. Despite their efforts to keep their rekindled romance private, the pressures of fame once again took a toll on their relationship. When the couple announced their divorce, fans were stunned, as were those closest to them. Many had expected this reunion to be a lasting one, given all they had been through. However, the cracks in their relationship were always visible to those who looked closely. Now, as Jennifer Lopez reclaims her original name and moves forward, Questions linger about the true dynamics of her relationship with Ben Affleck. And with Matt Damon's candid remarks, it's clear that the story behind Hollywood's most iconic love triangle is far from over.